whenever you see a series with a bunch of factorials in it, you should think about using the ratio test as your first plan of attack. This happens to be an alternating series, and the way you would ordinarily start investigating convergence for an alternating series is by looking for absolute convergence, because if you've got that, then you have ordinary convergence as well, and you can save some work. So when we're looking for absolute convergence, all we're doing is saying, forget about the alternating plus and minus. I'm just going to look at the positive part of each term. And with all these factorials around, I immediately think, let's do the ratio test. It's really good at dealing with factorials. So what we're looking at is the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. Again, we already took the absolute value because we're looking for absolute convergence of the next term divided by the previous one. And if that settles down to a limit less than 1, you have absolute convergence of your series. If it settles down to a limit bigger than 1, your series is going to diverge. And if it settles down to a limit equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. So let's give it a try. The large n limits of a n plus 1, so you just replace the n's with n plus 1's, that's n plus 1 factorial squared over 3 times n plus 1 all factorial, divided by the a n's, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of those. Now a common way of dealing with an expression like n plus 1 factorial is that you could write it as n plus 1 times a leftover n factorial. So I'm going to do that in there. And then I've got my 3n factorial. And then uh, what I notice in the denominator is that if I distribute the 3, so that happens before the factorial. So I end up with a 3n plus 3 all factorial. Then that looks promising to me because if I split off the first few terms of that, 3n plus 3 times 3n plus 2 times 3n plus 1, the remaining piece would be 3n factorial, and I should be able to cancel it. Let's get a little bit of canceling done in this next step. I see an n factorial squared in the numerator and denominator. So again, the plan here. Factorial just means you take that expression, multiply it by 1 less than that, multiply it by 1 less than that, and so on and so on. Well, I'm going to stop right here and say the rest of that string is just 3n factorial, and I'm going to cancel that out. Now, things get a little tricky at this point, and there's a real advantage to taking a less formal approach to this kind of limit. Notice that we're just looking at an ordinary rational function limit here, and whenever you have a rational function in a, in a large n limit, the highest power of n is going to dominate the numerator and dominate the denominator. So you can essentially cross out any other term that's not the highest power of n, and you're going to get the correct limit every time if you do that. So I don't feel like multiplying out those three binomials and keeping every single term if I know that only the highest power of n dominates. So let's square the binomial in the numerator, and I'm just going to say it's n squared plus other stuff with lower powers of n, and I don't care about it, other stuff. How about that denominator? That's 3n times 3n times 3n, 27n cubed plus other stuff that I don't care about becomes negligible in the large n limit. And so this limit becomes, the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 27n cubed, and I cancel two factors of n, and I finally see here that I'm getting 0 out of it. So 0 is certainly less than 1, and that shows that this series converges. And that means this series, the one we started with, we would call it absolutely convergent which automatically implies that it has ordinary convergence as well.